This week, I'll teach you how to add a bit of a light reflection to your car windows. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me on Facebook at Rita Pro. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna teach you guys how to add a little bit of a pop and a light effect to all of your car windows. I use this on almost all of my images, but it needs to be the right color tones and the right situation. So just think about that as well. But more about that in the tutorial now. So let's head into that. Okay, so in Photoshop, you guys can see that I've already in my layers palette here, have again a group. And also I wanna show you guys quickly the end result here, just what's coming up. So basically showing you guys how you can add some more effect to your windows. So again, this is the before, let's have a look. And the after, before and after. So normally these images are not that dark. I had to darken them a bit because we already did this technique onto this car image. So I've darkened this again and now showing the technique again. Normally it looks better because obviously these windows are a bit more see-through when you shoot it. So when you also shoot cars in studio or outdoor, this effect is always a nice little add-on, but just don't overdo it. It's a nice little add-on to give your car a nice pop there. Okay, so let's also go and do that quickly. I'm gonna show you guys how to do all of that effect in Photoshop. Now I can also see this doesn't look so good down here, but we're gonna do it better now. Okay, so first of all, what I'll do is do a cutout here of the windows. Again, I'm gonna zoom in a bit closer so you guys can see it here. And normally I will start out now cutting out a mirror, or uh, not the mirror, the window out of this car. So for that, I'm gonna select the pen tool. You can also try doing that with the magic wand tool if it works, but I wouldn't suggest that. It's a very bad tool to do stuff like that. Or the magic lasso tool if you're a complete newbie at this. But if you're watching this channel quite a lot, you should be familiar with some of these tools like the pen tool. So yeah, I'm gonna start right away out with the pen tool, selected from the tool panel here and start doing anchor points. Now, I'll also go around the little rubber here. Normally on every window, you have a bit of that rubber. So I wouldn't go over the rubber, just over that other little area here and place a few anchor points. Now, I'm also doing this quite quickly because I don't want to keep you too long watching this, how I do work with the pen tool. Um, but yeah, be a bit more precise when you do these cutouts with the pen tool in order for you to have a really great cutout. Okay, completing my path there, and I right away have a cutout here of the window. It's not the best, I have to admit it, but I, like I said, don't want to keep you too long. Okay, so we're with the pen tool. Inside of that path, I'm going to hit right click and say make a selection again. Zero feathering, please. Hit OK. And now for the next step, what I will do is first of all, save this. Because when you retouch on cars, quite a lot of times you need to go back and in, back in and out, out of the selection. So it comes in handy to save all your selections that you do on car images because obviously you do very precise cutouts here and selections. So what I'll do is go back to the marking tool in the tool panel, hit right click inside of that selection and say save selection. So that's my first option here, save selection under a new channel at the same document. And I will just write here uh, window one now. Okay, so that is my window, but I've already done that. So I'm gonna go with window three because I already have window one and two from the previous retouch. So. I'll go with window three now. You can rename it to anything you like. Hit OK, and now you've saved the selection. Let me show it to you guys quickly. I'm gonna press Command D in order to get out of the selection. So I'm also working with a Mac. Please press Control when I say Command. Okay, so you don't have a selection now. I'm gonna hit right click, or basically just normal click onto the rectangular marking tool. Now press right click and say Load Selection. And now I'm able to easily select under the channel window three, Okay, and I have my selection back again. So you can go back in and out, out of the selections. Great, I'm gonna go to the new layer icon down here, select it, let's move that to the top maybe, and this will be renamed to window one as well. You can obviously re rename it to whatever you want. Then for the next step that I'm going to do is check that my foreground colors here are switched to black and white. Okay, so for that is a shortcut keyboard. Just press X on the keyboard to switch the foreground colors to white in the foreground and black into the back, or again, X to opposite. Or if you want, press D, so it just resets it to black and white. Okay, so that these colors are set is perfect. So I normally choose white now because obviously the car is white and I'm outside and it's nice and bright. If you have color mixed within, say for instance, it's a night shot and you're in the parking lot or something, 
Then try to get the same color tones like a yellow or an orange, something that comes from a little bit of a warmer tone. Okay, so I'm going to go with white. Uh, if you have blue skies also, a little bit of a bluish tint can also work sometimes nicely. So play a little bit around with that. But for my tutorial here, for this picture, I'm going to go with white. I'm going to select the gradient tool over here from the left hand side. And now on the top application bar, I'm just going to select the gradient that goes from foreground color to transparent. So again, that's why I said check that your foreground color is set to the right color. So mine is going to be white now. Okay. And now on the new layer, I'm just with the gradient tool. I'm not holding shift. I'm just trying to make a nice little selection over here and grade it again from deep white into a soft fading white going all the way to transparent. Okay, so I'm okay. I'm really happy with this already now. Sometimes I do it like five, six times until I'm happy with that whole gradient. I'm going to press Command D, get out of the selection, and right away I can see my little gradient that's fading over the window. But it's obviously too strong. So what I normally do is just take the opacity all the way down to like 40%, 50%, until I think, yeah, that's kind of working for me. And that also suits the image, so you don't overdo it. And sometimes that you can still see through, but you obviously have a bit of that white reflection going down the window. Also, remember, you can add another mask to this now. And if you have certain areas that are not cutting out really nicely or like here overdone a bit, use the mask here and with another pen tool, create a path and brush things out and work a bit with the mask. Yeah, great. So that's the technique just for the side. Let's also do it to the front. This time I'm not going to show you guys with the pen tool how I cut this out. If you want to learn more about that, have a look on the channel. It's a great tutorial teaching you about the pen tool. For this, again, I'm going to go to the marking tool, hit right click and say load selection. And this time I'm going to go for window two because I started with window one here on the right hand side, the passenger seat. Window 2 is the front, and then I showed a new tutorial here, obviously Window 3, that was now our cutout here. So Window 2 is my front option, I'm going to hit OK, and right away you guys can see that I've cut out completely the whole window. But I've also cut out here the wipers, so we need to work that around that as well. I'm going to create a new layer from down here, and we can rename that again right away to Window 2, OK. And I'm going to select my gradient tool and do pretty much the same. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Sometimes a bit, it's a bit easier if you zoom out a, a little bit. Okay, I'm going to make a gradient like that. And right away, I don't like it. So I'm going to press Command Z just to go a step back to undo that. Okay, and let's do it again. Undo again. Yeah, that looks actually not too bad. I'm also obviously looking at where the sun is coming. So it's right from the top. So I'll use it right from the top as well. Okay, I'm going to press Command D, get out of the selection, and take the opacity again, maybe down to like 40%. Sometimes I also go back and have a look at the first layer, 41. Yep, and then also 41 over here, maybe even a bit stronger. That also depends on the window. What I also directly see is that my rubber here, I've cut it out so close to the window, so I would need to make this a bit smaller. Normally you have this black strip here from the glass, and then only on here a lot of white. So what I'll do is just press Command T, get into the transform mode, hold Shift on the keyboard, and make it a bit smaller. Okay, like so. And you guys can already see the edge here. So be careful with that as well. Okay, and I'll move that around a bit. This one I would actually do again because it's not looking that great. But you guys get the point of what I do with the reflections. Now at the bottom, I still want to cut that out. So just again, a mask on that with the mask tool down here. I'm going to select with B the brush, press Control all together on the keyboard, hold it, and also going to move my mouse left and right to change my diameter or up again the hardness. I normally do this actually with my Wacom Intenuous 5 Pro tablet, but the hardness I do with Control alt and holding that in. So hardness set back to zero, please. Then as well the opacity, sometimes I start working out here just with 50%. Okay, and now with the black foreground color, I'm going to just brush away a bit here at the bottom. Okay, brush out that we get the wipers back. Okay, and then obviously do exactly the opposite now. X again, switching the foreground colors, and I'm brushing back just a little bit here, but this may be on a harder opacity. Let's start with 100%. I'm just slowly brushing away 
or back here the reflection. Okay, and I'm doing this quite quickly. Take a bit more time when you do this. Okay, so it looks kind of okay. I would need to do this a bit properly. Okay, and I'm switching again just to hide it again a little bit. Just bringing the mirrors back. And here, over here as well. Okay, actually, I'm going to do a nice big one now and have a look what, it, what effect it will give me. So what I'm doing now is make my brush really big. I'm just going to make a really big stripe over here, Boop, like so. I'm having a look. Yeah, it's very uncontrolled. I would rather try to make a nicer gradient next time. Okay, and then maybe opacity is still down a bit more, 50, 42%. Yeah, great. Again, showing you the technique before and after. So let's select both of these with Command. Press Command G, put it together in a group. I'm just going to write here Window 2. Windows. Do yes, and show you guys the before and after. Again, I'm doing this quite quickly. Normally I take way more time, like 20 minutes or longer to just do this with the windows. So again, this was my quick, quick version here, showing you a before and after, and then this one that we did now in the tutorial. But again, just have a look what it does to the picture. It just adds a bit of a reflection to the windows. And remember, normally the windows are not that dark. Yeah, so guys, as you can see, it is not too complicated to create these. Again, work with the pen tool, create a selection, then again, save the selection, do some gradients until you are happy with the gradients, then use the mask to refine and use the opacity to fit it in nicely. Yeah, super easy. Anyone can do it and you can do it to all of your car images to let them look a little bit nicer. Yeah, if you enjoyed this content, guys, like always, do give me a thumbs up, share this with all your buddies who are new to car photography and retouching. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. It's coming up on Thursday, the light talk. Until then, and you are still waiting for some more content. And yeah, and wait no longer. Just click over here. On the top, we have something from the last week. Again, some tutorials. And at the bottom, something from our most popular section. Yeah, so wait no longer. Simply head over there and click away.